Welcome to Overdrive AF, the official podcast of Overdrive Fitness. My name is Teddy Gerzon, and I'm joined by Gina Marie Gerzon. Hello. As always, on the ones and twos, Destroyer. What's up? And we have Titan and Brajol here with us today, even though um, New York, at least Rockland County, is still under like a foot of snow. So, but the sun is out, so... The sun is out and melting it. We're making some progress here. I can't wait to add another three to five inches tomorrow. Yeah, oh. Um, Let's not talk about it. <laughs> at least the snowblower is working this time. Thank Good God. Time See? D.A.B. <laughs> junk removal. D.A.B. Pressure washing and junk removal. <laughs> Mr. Fix Anything. Seriously. And uh, he's, he's also... John Dabonino is also our real-life Tim Allen. Because why fix a snowblower when you can put a 13-horsepower motor on it? <laughs> oh, he wants to put his old Mustang engine in the yellow truck. That, oh, wow. He could drag race. He would win some money. <laughs> That's a, could, that'll be a real sleeper. the only box truck that breaks the 11-second marker yeah. and wins money. <laughs> Imagine losing to an 87 box truck, 87 <laughs> Ford box truck. <laughs> Running 11s. 1099. <laughs> what? Vin Diesel will be so proud. Oh my god. <laughs> Family. Yeah. All right. So, um, we made our Super Bowl predictions last episode. By the time this one releases, uh, you know, the Super Bowl will have been over. So, since we can predict the future, congrats to the Chiefs for winning Super Bowl. No, I'm kidding. And we could do like different takes. Yeah. Just use like the Chiefs one or the Bucks mm-hmm. one, depending on who wins. So then pause, <laughs> yeah. dead silence. Congrats to the Bucks for winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> and then we cut that yeah. and use that again. Perfect. <laughs> and uh, no, nah, I, mean, I mean, I am excited for the Super Bowl. Um, yeah. to, I'm not going to lie, probably going to watch it from my phone. Mm-hmm. I do not have the patience to be sitting there through commercials. So at least if it's on my phone, I can like have ADD fits roam around the house, not miss it, right? So be efficient with our Sunday. Exactly. Or I might throw it on all the fire sticks and my phone, so I never miss a clip just of it. it <laughs> yeah, just why not, right? Sure. So yeah, definitely pumped for that. Even though I do hate the Super Bowl, but um, that means we we'll, we won't have any football for a while. We won't even have the NFL Combine. All right, they're not doing the combine this year. Why? Uh, COVID. But you know what? I think it's actually the best thing. Cause There's it's, so many, it's so, it's so skewed, it's so, so crazy. It's a bunch of meaningless fitness tests. So That's exactly crazy. like what we went over last time. Stop doing meaningless fitness tests. And no, here no, we are talking about, true. like, your, the 40 yard dash. The fuck? The bench press test. I mean, there's other, uh, whatever. I mean, if if we went by the combine, right, to predict all the who would be the best players in the NFL going forward from the draft every year, mm-hmm. we would never hear of Tom Brady. Tom Brady yeah, absolutely right. did not do well. They took a picture of him of his body comp to see how athletic he looked. He looks like a fucking sixty year old accountant when mm-hmm. he was like twenty two. <laughs> so That's like. True. He's not fast, and he's not quick, but, I mean, obviously a great quarterback. And what about all the guys that had prepared in the past for the combines that end up shitting the bed because of travel time, delays, Mm -hmm. um, didn't get their food in, stress levels, all these other things, and they bomb the test. But they're awesome, totally awesome athletes, like above uh, and beyond. Even the psychological tests, so like even the the interviews. So sometimes – You'll hear organizations will just go at these players about their past history, mm. or they'll they'll throw them some softball questions, and then all of a sudden they're just like, "So you hang out with Billy a lot? Are you gay? Do you like dudes? Yeah. How many times have you gotten with a guy?" And they they really go at you and try to get you to like admit to like homosexual tendencies, just to see like, and then their excuse is like, "Oh, we just wanted to see if he would crack under pressure." Well, like. You're asking, like, pretty fucked up shit that has nothing to do with football. So, whatever. Oh, like, we can go gets... down so many roads So, the Combine, so I'm actually not that upset. I, I do enjoy watching 
you know, how athletic these people are. But at the same time, it's I think it's in the best interest of these future NFL players uh, to actually train, use the entire offseason to train for their sport, not to use eight to 12 weeks of it to train for a job interview that's not going to translate to the job they're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. So that's just my hot take on it. If you can feel a little bit of the anger in my voice, it's probably also coming from the fact that I just started another cut. Um, When I say I'm starving, I'm not actually starving. It's not like a real thing. But I like to exaggerate. I'm starting the hangry series. Of oh, it just yes. started. It started yesterday. Just started. <laughs> and we're, 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 we get ready to we're 24 just hours into it. watch something on TV and all of a sudden, I'm so hungry. Did I get my voice deep enough for that? For that? That was, and I'm like, how, it's been 24 hours. I live my life in hyperbole. It's the mental game. It is. Just knowing you can't have it. <laughs> makes you want it. That well, it's just how much of it, you know, you just have to think like, <coughs> what, what's the goal and what are we striving towards and is it worth it? And it is. It's always worth it. In the end, right? Still making those fucking brownies tonight and I bought Good. those two okay. on sale. <laughs> but It'll that, be the only thing I eat today. It's about balance, <laughs> right? It's about allowing your body to have what it needs to do things in the appropriate dosages. There's always there's always a method. There's always a reason why. <laughs> so my latest brownie portion hack is uh, bake the brownies in a pie plate. This way you can evenly distribute your slices, especially if you want to put some ice cream on top. Mm. But, you know, the box... Because, you know, I'm, I'm not the greatest chef in the world here, but I am awesome at following shitty instructions. And uh, <laughs> Teddy likes to measure everything. Yeah, you just scan that fucker right into my fitness pal, do the math, there's your serving size. Boom. But you were going to cut the middle, only the middle out of the brownie. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm here to piss people off. <laughs> just eat Those the are my brownies. <laughs> <laughs> and leave the, the edges. <laughs> I'm going to cut the middle, but in the shape of a middle finger. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to use an X-Acto knife. <laughs> you made sure to get the the double chocolate, right? You wanted the chocolate chunks in there? Super chunk. Yep. You got to give them, give them the specifics on exactly what type of brownie mix you purchased. Yes, super chunk. It's <laughs> fucking amazing. I didn't think it was going to be that great. I mean, I thought it was going to be delicious, but I didn't even think it would be fucking amazing. So, yes. I'm looking forward to that tonight. Yum. Maybe we should throw up um, the recipes I've been using for the Mexican shredded beef and my uh, shredded been, chicken. We've been slow cooking a lot. We. Oui. The men have been holding down the kitchen in Excuse our house. Excuse me, after all the cooking that I do and I've done over the years. It's what have you done for me lately. That's oh. that's the sports world that we after live the, in. After the 13 years that we've been together. They're just like, you know what? I take a Derek week Cheater, off. we haven't won a World Series in 2009. I think it's time you do your retirement tour. I'll let you have your moments, okay. There's a lot of sarcasm behind this statement, that's why. It's almost like... Amari Sotomayor. It's like, thanks for signing a big contract to attract Mello. Now get the fuck out. It's like, but bro, there would be no us if it wasn't for me. But anyway, I digress. Um, so why are we really here, Teddy? Because we need to find out about Destroyer's transformation first. Well, so, Which um, we know is going really well. How did this week go, Destroyer? Um, well, it's tough because due to uh, weather, I didn't get to come in for my usual... Uh, Way in, well, so that's I don't okay. know exactly how how we did. Um, my guess would be up in muscle consistently, and potentially up a little bit in fat because it was very difficult to uh, get out to run this week. Okay. There are no no available sidewalks. I've been trying to scout some like trails to see if there's any spots cleared to get that back in the next. Weeks, but you've been but hitting your workouts. I see it. Yeah, yeah. It's great. And making sure to maybe I'll go in like phases week to week. This week was just like all lifting mm-hmm. 
every day. That's great, though. And then maybe next week we'll get in mostly running. It's okay. And balance it out a little bit. There you go. We can see it in the genes. Yeah. That's for sure. Good. Like, I mean, look, yeah. he's filling out his genes. No, I know. I yeah. heard that when Destroyer shows up to pick up his sushi takeout, yeah. they all run into the back in fear of Quadzilla. No, I know. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll That's be here it. all week. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Look, we don't have much more of this. Yeah. You know, Mother Nature not understanding where she wants to be and what she wants to do, and I get it. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's the hormones. I don't think it's. A, I don't even think it's a down or a lost week. It's just no. A different, different way of going about it. There's always ways to manipulate things, and we'll always take the gain in muscle. Yeah. We'll always take it because in the end it benefits you. Yeah. It always benefits you. I was talking to my friend the other day and I was like I don't know if you know this, but I'm like jacked now. He was like, No. <laughs> and then I showed him a picture and he was like Um Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like yeah. I wear clothes nice. just to cover it up because yeah. I'm trying to I'm downplaying it right not now fair because for everybody else. I know. <laughs> I'm like this. I wanna be able to walk down the street and not be mangled. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Feeling yourself. Just, you know. Yeah. Trying Is to ease up? into it. Yeah. Did you throw a DX at him? A little DX <laughs> chop? <laughs> Told you, bro. It's a missed opportunity. <laughs> you can always hit him with a sweet chin music next time you see yeah. him in person. Yeah. Well, HBK. Yeah, buddy. So that's awesome. Um, obviously, no mileage in. No. Jump shot was not there. So you Try, went straight meathead this week. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was a lot of arms shoulders, chest kind of stuff this week. You should still dunk the trash on Aiden anyway in the house, just yeah. so you get some sort of basketball in. Yeah, I'll ask him to come out and help, and I'll back him down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe a little dream shake? Yeah. I love a little it. Giannis Euro step to the There we go. The dunk. Yeah. So, awesome. Getting your pumps in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Today's topic, this week's topic, meeting people where they are. Okay, so specifically when I when I say that in regards to athletes, um, I think that statement is very important these days, especially given the current state of like high school sports in New York. All right, so um, high school sports, even college sports. Right, so. Some colleges aren't even starting their official practices for the spring semester until February 4th, uh, 15th, right? Today is February 6th, we're recording this? Yes, and um, their first game is like March 1st. So, uh, you know, knowing that a lot of people don't have regular access to gyms and um, weather's been shitty for them to even train outside, you can. It's almost a given that no athlete is going to be in the physical condition excuse me, that they should be when the season starts. All right, and it's not going to happen in two weeks. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, with that being said, two weeks is not only going to prevent you from being physically conditioned for the sport that you play, um, or at least normally conditioned for the sport that you play, but you know. You got to factor in the, like the specifically college students the stress that they have to go through academically. They're under more stress now because it's all online or hybrid, so it's even tougher to learn. Okay, um, and now you're gonna try to add in the mental stress. You have to add in the mental stress on top of that, or add to that mental stress of uh, you know learning plays or you know the principles and philosophies of the the defense or offense or what have you in each given position and try to build that team chemistry in only groups of six to eight being 10 feet apart on a field that isn't shoveled yet, right? So there's just a lot going on. Um, yeah, it's it's just like a clusterfuck, stressful gangbang of pure anxiety for your brain. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it clean, okay? Um, and it's just like what the fuck you know um so if you can almost expect that there will be injuries 
if we take a normal approach to all of this or there will be panic and anxiety attacks or people just having mental breakdowns right so I think people strength coaches and sport coaches need to get on the same page now more than ever and just have real realistic expectations set and goals set that can actually be done in two weeks because I mean even from like a sport coaching standpoint so like the fact that I used to coach football right I know that if I were getting a team ready now because there are high school teams trying to get their football teams ready to play for March 1st right I'm probably only going to teach my team six plays and make sure they can master those six plays because you know you in those two weeks you're going to have to have everybody's um, bodies go through a just helmets practice you know one day maybe two days and then helmet and shoulder pads and then get them ready for full contact and then get them conditioned for full contact and then and that's just like the head-on stuff and then you got to worry about getting hit from other angles all while dealing with online learning and then throwing in them mastering their plays not just learning them mastering them which is hard enough in a in the real world right so uh, when when people second guess themselves things get fucked up right so now let's talk about lacrosse right so you know uh, there's there's definitely a lot of running that goes on in that sport and you know how much of it has actually been going on right now you know uh for anybody that's not or that does play lacrosse and they're getting ready for their season right um you know will the fields be ready with the amount of snow that we have uh you know a lot of students are not doing well academically because they can't handle the online training that they did not sign up for when they registered for college right uh it's just to You don't go grocery shopping in a Ferrari every day. It's just, it's not feasible, right? So just, we need realistic expectations. So um, like last week we spoke about, you know, fitness tests, let's get rid of useless fitness tests. You know, now on to, to add on to that, let's just make sure that we are smart with what we do with our athletes. And now, as far as adults, I mean, what do you have to say about like meeting adults where they are? Well, I mean, we have adults at all different levels. We have adults that have been high school and college athletes that have continued on their journey somewhat <coughs> and then have arrived Excuse here with us, and they want to get back to that the great shape that they were in. Maybe marriage happened, kids happened, stress at work happened, a promotion happened at work, a move happened, marriage, whatever the case. Marriage. Uh, marriage. Marriage. I <laughs> know. <laughs> Um, the Princess Bride. Is that what we're talking about? Love that movie. Do you um, like that movie? Never seen it. <laughs> really? <laughs> Wait, God, hold up. Jesse. Pause. You had Miss Hinchcliffe in high school? Yeah. And she didn't have you watch that movie? No. That was like a required movie for us oh, in high school. Oh, man. Should have been. That's like that's like my white whale. Like I've, I've always feel like I should see it and I need to see it. Yeah, Both, no, like, definitely. Man, the list I is getting longer. End up missing out on. If we don't get a review of that movie from you by the next right, episode, absolutely. you're oh, fired. Boy. Okay. <laughs> it's on the record. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, it if it's not available free to watch anywhere, I will pay for it for <laughs> you to download it. I, of all the dumb movies I fucking love, I love that movie. Like, that doesn't even fit oh, my... That's like, that's like people's, some people's like best movie of all time. Yeah, but I, we were I talking about a guy that made you that. watch all the Rambos in one weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm obsessed with like the Rambos, the Rockies, Commando, yeah. Terminator, Predator, and then throwing the Princess Bride. <laughs> <laughs> a little culture. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get on. Gonna have to, I'm telling you, the list is getting longer, Desi. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have to knock them off I'm gonna, I'm gonna one to, at a time, time or binge watch something. Yeah. Like it pull an all nighter or something. I had to send some hate mail to Mrs. Kearns. Was <laughs> she Mrs. Kearns when you had her? She was Mrs. Kearns. She got soft when she got married. Yeah, oh must boy. Have been. <laughs> I'm going to tell her she's the air sat version of Miss Hinchcliffe. Oh, jeez. That's an SAT word she used to throw out a lot. Oh. She, she used that one to you a lot, too? That wasn't big. In the air sats? <laughs> She'd be like, air sats. My mom used to say, air sats, mashed potatoes. You don't make them out of the box. And I was like, oh, gosh. Eh, nice. 
So um, I digress. Well, well, like like we were saying, we have all different types of adult uh, adult athletes um, in here. So we've had we have the ones who have kind of graduated from that high school college athlete. Um, we have those ex gym goers or whatever the case that have either injured themselves and have been told by their orthopedist, <coughs> even PT, that they won't be able to do this movement ever again, possibly never bench press again, squat, deadlift, whatever the case. Um, we have members that come in that want to lose the 50 pounds and have certain goals for themselves within a certain period of time. Um, everybody, just even within that conversation, has um, we would start them off uh, at a different speed, right? Yes. We wouldn't necessarily get that person who the orthopedist told would never bench press again under the bar at 225. Um, yeah, 315 is more For like somebody it. who's the avid runner that has flat feet, that all of a sudden um, heads down the stairs with his children and his reconstructed knee starts bothering him again out of nowhere. What a loser. So where do we go from there? We, even if this person has been with us for a year or two years or even three years and all of a sudden, you know, because of maybe improper um, running mechanics, um, all of a sudden these things start to show up. So where do we, where do we take these people? What, what road do they travel um, when they're here? So everybody would pretty much st be starting or continuing on a different path to get them where they need to go. So to feel successful, be mm -hmm. successful, right? Um, so, I don't know, let's take, for instance, um, I don't know, that person that the orthopedist says you'll never bench, be benching again with a barbell. So would we, we wouldn't necessarily throw them under the bar with 225 on the bar, even if that person is naturally strong in their stature, maybe has had some good years of lifting in the past. I don't know if the mechanics were appropriate. I would say no. Um, but how would we break it down? Would we look at, their, look at their natural mechanics, maybe just with the barbell? Let's see their range of motion, their mobility, their lack thereof, their stability through the joint, that kind of thing. Maybe we'd get them on some band work. Um, Mobility just to start opening up the joint in itself. Where is his? Where are his or her limitations? Um, where are they tight? Where are they unstable? That kind of thing, and kind of go from there, right? Maybe the barbell starts to feel good. Maybe adding some dumbbell work. Maybe adding some some band work, some some range of motion accessory work to help hit all areas of the shoulder, the back, the core. Where where can we stabilize the joints better? That kind of thing, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, that person who wants to lose 50 pounds in that very short period of time, maybe we, we start to um, allow them to understand that, you know, that journey might take them a little bit longer than eight weeks. Mm -hmm. let's, let's make it feasible. Let's, let's um, try to pencil, pencil out that big picture, and, you know, it might take them, maybe if it's two pounds a week, one to two pounds is healthy, depending on their stature, mm -hmm. what their past dieting history has been, injury history has been, whatever the case. Could that take them 12 weeks or longer? Absolutely. Maybe towards 20 weeks and beyond. Plus and, the maintenance phase. Right. And, and how can we get them to feel confident in maintaining that newer weight going forward in a year or two years and even beyond? Right. Um, that person who, um, you know, that, that process might take, okay, so if we were there, creating some really healthy habits, two or three at a time, having them solidify those two or three habits every week, and then maybe changing them, maybe getting them to drink a little bit more water, consecutively, you know, um, getting that rest in, restful sleep, getting that restful sleep in, maybe six six or seven hours if that's not normal for them, even hitting that number. Incorporating some vegetables in their diet. Getting some walking in, maybe if it's 10 minutes a day. You know, two days of strength work in. If they're used to not doing anything, maybe just starting them off here at two days a week. Um, just simple things like that. 
what about that person who's been running for the majority of their lives and getting those miles in but their mechanics have been off for a number of years they don't know it and then they realize oh well I did have my knee constructed how many years ago reconstructed excuse me um, and all of a sudden I'm just I'm heading down the stairs to, to leave with my kids and boom my knee I tweaked my knee okay so let's look at the feet let's look at your gait let's look at a lot of different movement patterns so we can kind of pinpoint where is it coming from maybe you're not striking the ground properly you know getting them on a different conditioning program that limits their running right now because there might be an overuse issue mm -hmm. and you know still allowing them to get that conditioning in by other means and giving them some sort of a corrective program in their overdrive app which we've um, we've done a great job with and I must give ourselves a pat on the back for that and allowing them to hit that consistently two to three maybe four times a week with specific exercises to help strengthen those foundational that foundation to um, get them back to possibly feeling good in their knee again good good running mechanics again and then going forward right mm -hmm. so those are one two three different um, situations with three totally different programs right so everybody yeah. would be doing something different for different needs different issues but they can all meet and again in the same place at some point in time and I, I think <clears throat> to one thing that that you can apply to both like the athletes and the adults that we have here as far as like meeting them where they are um, you really got to think long term so you know, like a lot of people are so anxious to get sports started back up uh, when, yes, we want to do it for like, let's say this year's seniors, right? But let's also not waste this time as basically like as another preseason or an off season. So we're like, groom your freshmen, build them up, right? Your sophomores, your juniors, get your juniors ready for another, for their senior season, right? So look ahead, like what can you do now to get them to master, like let's say only three things, in this upcoming season so that you can really build upon it next year and dominate right and then for adults like we have people that they come here they want to lose 50 pounds right they're all, i want to sign up for your 12-week challenge for and i want to lose 50 pounds it's like okay but do you want to lose 50 pounds forever so let's say it's going to take you 30 40 weeks to not only lose it but then remold that new body of yours so not only did you lose 50 pounds, but now you're holding more muscle at at that like 250 range instead of 300. So you're a lean 250, mm -hmm. right? And and then never have to look back. So like, would you trade 30 the next 38 weeks of your life to make sure that you never gain those 50 pounds back for the for the, the rest of your 30 or 40 years that you have left on this earth? Or do you just want to lose it right away and then revisit this problem again next year and then the year after and then the year after, right? So it's like I actually heard someone talk about like uh, Warren Buffett the other day in regards to something like this where like when it comes to investing, he said the problem is everybody wants the results right away, right? So people want to become millionaires instantly, whereas no one takes the time to – to take advantage of like the simple little habits that you can do on a daily basis that'll make you a millionaire in 10 years. Like no one wants to hear him say like, if you do this, you will have a million dollars in the bank in 10 years. No, everyone wants a million dollars now. So pe most people, 90% of people will actually spend 10 years looking for quick ways to make a million dollars and never hit it when they can just spend every day for the next 10 years doing one small thing that'll make them a guaranteed millionaire. The same thing goes to losing weight. Do the small things that you can do every single day to make sure that you are healthy for the rest of your life. Small changes. Yeah. The small things end up being the big things. Small I think, things. I think Warren Buffett knows a little bit about investing, right? I would say so. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, got a passive knowledge of it. <laughs> yeah. 
I heard Berkshire Hathaway only has like 30 employees also. And they're enormous. Like, talk about a guy that has everything down fucking pat. It's amazing. So Those little things become just your daily routine after a while, and it doesn't, it's not even a second thought, you know? It, it just becomes part of your daily, your, your daily process. You don't have to think about it anymore. You know, the consistency, um, the, the diligence, the just continually getting after it. You drink your water, you eat your vegetables, you get your workout in, you, you, you shut your phone off, shut the TV off, or meditate, get a run in, go, go take a yoga class, um, meet with some friends to get that social support. Like, there's all those things that just become ingrained in you and they become that consistent fuel for your success it becomes part of your daily life and that's and and that's what allows you to be successful in the long term is just drilling those daily habits in they become ingrained in you and things that actually feel good you know Mm -hmm. balance is really important All right, so that's all I have really for this week and, and that topic. you have anything else to add? No, it's good. Destroyer? Yeah. I think we got it. I mean, look at Destroyer. Small changes, stayed on top of it. He's got his quads ripping through his jeans. Mm-hmm. So, hey, it works. It's boring, but it fucking works. So do the boring work. That's it. All right, uh, that's all we have for this week. We will um, go over our Super Bowl picks on the next episode and brag about how we are all soothsayers here. (laughs) Um, And hopefully uh, one week from now, I will be a lot less hungry. So catch you guys on the flip side. Operation Shred Ted is in full gear. Bye, buddy.